Hello everyone, I am Scott Pye, also known as Nature's Temper, or basically Nature. I'm here to review the Tiger King. I am a zoologist, I have studied three years at Liverpool John Moores University, and before that I studied for three years doing animal care and welfare with St. Helens College. I have experience both in the field with exotic species, such as more like crocodiles and a bunch of other things, and in here in, in the UK with animal care and husbandry. So yeah, those are my credentials. They are far from perfect. There's a lot of people who have a lot more on their plate and they can give a more well-rounded idea as to what things should be done. But I'm going to be talking about the animal's welfare and the conservation of the animals in the show and what is done wrong and ways things could be done better. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. So I'm going to start by defining what a good zoo is, and yes, those do exist, sorry Peter. So a good zoo is an organization that prioritizes conservation, welfare, and education. Preferably conservation or welfare first, and then education as a bonus. Which is a very important part of conservation is actually education. One zoo that I think epitomizes this very well is Chester Zoo. I'll be referencing this zoo a lot because I think it does a lot of good stuff and I am well versed with this zoo more than I am any other zoo in the world. So an example of why Chester Zoo is so good, Chester Zoo led a project that saw return of black rhinos to Rwanda, significantly increasing their numbers. They are practically aiding in conservation very, very well. On top of this, something that's easier for zoos to do is educate their visitors. Chester does this on the illegal wildlife trade and unsustainable living that affects wildlife. This is pretty much a gold level standard, and something every single organization in this show falls short of. So professionality. So none of the people who own the actual zoos in this show, especially GW Zoo, have degrees, diplomas, or any scientific background in animal welfare or any similar field. Not Mr. Antle, not Joe, not Carol, or anyone else in charge of these zoos or sanctuaries have proper qualifications to know what they're doing. They may have employed people that do, but as it stands, none of the actual owners of the park know what they're doing. And it's quite clear from the show that none of these people are following what the UK has created, that's been adopted around the world by places like the World Organization for Animal Health and even the ASPCA. This is called the Five Freedoms. It dictates that animals must always have access to the proper nutrition they deserve, must be free from pain, injury, sickness, and harm, be housed in a correct enclosure, be able to express natural behaviors, and they must be housed with or apart from animals of the same or other species. That last part means that if you have an animal like a better splendor, otherwise known as a Siamese fighting fish, you cannot have two males housed together for they will fight to the death. But one of the same animals can be housed with one or a few females or potentially with other species that it will not harm and will not harm it in return. It's a little harder to put it in context with big cats because a lot of them are solitary. If you have a lion, it is best to put lions in a group and that is natural. To have a tiger and keep them in a group is less natural, but it does help them with captivity. So that is a gray area. No vets on site. It's a standard practice in zoological organizations to either have an on-site vet, or at least have vets regularly visit the animals for checkups, or to perform procedures like operations or euthanasia. Leading on from that is unlawful euthanasia, this is the euthanizing of healthy animals and healthy cubs. At this point pretty much speaks for itself, and Joe was already convicted for this as a crime. And if there's any chance that Mr. Antle is guilty of this, it should be thoroughly investigated. To prevent instances like culling of cubs, good organizations will record deaths and birth rates of animals and submit them to a shared database. If young or healthy animals continue to die at this location, then that would raise suspicion and would be investigated more quickly. Contact or no contact. Contact, especially at a young age for animals like tigers, can be extremely stressful. And stress can lead to sickness or even death. 
This problem is even further amplified when it happens on a regular basis with loud crowds, flashing lights, and so on. Many of these animals are actually taken from their mothers at extremely young ages. One scene, a freshly out of the womb cub is dragged from their mother by Joe and is immediately handled without any personal protective equipment. This puts the animals at a very high risk of infection, as a lot of their antibodies haven't been gained from their mother yet. And if one day they are returned to their mother, she might kill them because they haven't properly bonded at a young age. For this point, I've got to give Carol Baskins a gold star. Handling animals like this is a terrible idea, even at an older age. Contact with adults is obviously dangerous and should be avoided with sober animals. If a tiger attacks someone, not only is it obvious that that person could die, the tigers doing what comes naturally to them are put down, which is absolutely illogical. It's a very easily avoidable scenario that not the cats nor people should ever be put in. Next topic is conservation. Now, one of the excuses a lot of the cat owners use is that having tigers in captivity in America is great in case they go extinct in the wild. Now, that would be the case if 99% of these tigers weren't known as trash tigers. So, as I said, 99% of the tigers in private ownership are not even fit for being part of a breeding program, and that's because they're known as trash tigers, animals that are too interbred with different species of tiger that their genetic identity is lost. A Bengal tiger is not adapted for Siberia, and a Siberian tiger is not adapted for Bengal. A baby between the two isn't equipped for either environment. White tigers are another problem. So, white tigers are not a species in themselves, but a rare color morph that many find beautiful, because they are. They are a very beautiful creature. Unfortunately, since this gene is so rare, private owners have inbred the cats with each other so much that birth defects associated with said inbreeding have become extremely common. So, ligers, very big, very charismatic animals. Due to the lack of growth inhibitors in these animals, they can reach record-breaking sizes. But as with many large mammals, this can affect their health negatively, via their joints and or the cardiovascular system. Ligers and tigons also serve absolutely no conservation purpose. They don't, or almost never, occur in the wild, and are mostly sterile with extremely rare exceptions. Just because two animals can interbreed, doesn't mean they should. So on to the next topic, welfare. Enclosures, they are too small and most of them are made of the wrong materials. Falling back to the five freedoms, enclosures are an incredibly important part of making a captive animal's life better. The best way to do this is simple. Recreate the animal's natural habitat to the best of one's abilities. No one in the show does this well. Big Cat Rescue seems to try, but the enclosures are still extremely lacking. On the screen right now, you can see an example of an extremely good Big Cat enclosure, and this isn't even the entire enclosure. This is simply the outside section. It has many places the animals can hide, spaces to run, water to swim in. This is the Jaguar exhibit at Chester Zoo, and they also have an equally large enclosure indoors and a third area in which the animals can sleep out of the view of the public. This is a good standard for a solitary species such as jaguars and tigers. Every species is different, so a lion enclosure would look quite different to this one. Enrichment is basically anything that can make an animal's existence in captivity better. In the Tiger King you can see very basic enrichment, such as stands that the tigers lie on, and occasionally plants, but it's far from satisfactory. Enclosures for tigers and other big cats should be loaded with vegetation, a swimming pond, and other things replicating the cat's natural habitat. Feeding large carnivores anywhere in captivity is expensive and tough. When it comes to nutritional value, meat for human consumption and waste products from supermarkets pose some problems, as they're often filled with additives not designed with large cats in mind. Nutrition itself is a field I'm not very well versed in, so I won't go too much further than that. As with everything, experts need to be employed at these organizations, knowing what they're doing. 
Hiring people with actual knowledge and scientific understanding of big cat nutrition is a must when you're looking after big cats. Animal euthanasia is not a happy thing to talk about, but it was a major part of the show. Apart from the obvious legal implications of unneeded euthanasia, there's the ethicality and the suffering involved. Joe has admitted to killing the cats himself, again without any veterinary background, even using guns as an option. The humane way to put animals down is via lethal injection, and not with a bullet. More expensive, but if you can't afford it, you should not be running a zoo. One point I want to talk about is the alligators burning to death. Seven alligators died in a blaze at the GW Zoo. Whether it was intentional by anyone is not the point I'm trying to make here. Having an enclosure for any animals, especially animals that are aquatic, alongside tons of electrical equipment is a recipe for disaster. A clear display of poor planning and knowledge putting the animals at risk. Now to the last section which I am not an expert at. The people. First one is actually an organization. PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. On the surface, it sounds good. It's what I want. I want the animals to be at the top possible welfare they can have. The problem with PETA is that they are very polarizing. In their words, there is no such thing as a good zoo. I believe that if you take these people to an actual good zoo like Chester and explain to them why it is good and what it is needed for, many of them would still argue. In a perfect world where there are no endangered species, and their natural habitats are in abundance, maybe they would have a point. There is a good idea with poor execution. The actual main people of the show, like Joe, Carol, Jeff, and so on, do they actually care about these animals and their conservation in the wild? That's not for me to say, I'm not a psychologist. I do believe that certain select people like John and Saf and Josh actually care about the species as a whole and the individual animals that they're caring for. Eric and Rinky seem to care about the animals as individuals, but they seem undereducated in the aspect of conservation as a whole and why handling is such a bad idea. So what is the conclusion? It was fun, engrossing, but didn't do much to help the cats as a whole. I've actually heard of people wanting to get tigers after watching the show, which is very disheartening. The thing that needs to be done is proper education. Many people don't see a problem unless people like myself point it out to them. Which is understandable, because most people don't specialize in this field, and it's up to people, specialists, naturalists, conservationists, to tell the general public why this is a problem, and I think one wouldn't have gone amiss on the show. Something to keep in mind for next time, Netflix. The last thing I want to say is mainly directed at the United States government and any other governments that have similar legislation. You need to bring in proper legislations, licenses to own these animals. You shouldn't just have the right to own an exotic predator like that. In the UK, we have something called the Dangerous Wild Animals License, which you need to prove that you can own these animals and the local authorities, the local government, the council, needs to approve that you can. If they say no, you don't get anything. That's fine. Uh, but they make sure your facilities, your home if you're keeping it, or another location are suitable for that animal. And that's fantastic. I'm not saying that America or any other country needs to completely perfectly mimic the UK. I just think we do it quite well. Not perfectly, definitely not perfectly, because there's still some people that get through the little holes in the net. There's even a man who's calling himself the Lion King, who owns lions because he used to own a circus. And he is in there with the animals. I don't think there's an actual law against that. It's just, he's not a con conservation zoo, so he's not really thinking about their conservation. He, he's thinking that he cares about the animals, which he seems to. And he is using the animals to get people enraptured, which is an argument for another day. Should animals be used for entertainment if it helps with their conservation in the long run? <sighs> That's a very grey area. Super grey area. For example, I love Steve Irwin. He's my hero. But should he be feeding crocodiles very dangerously from the top of a stand whilst it jumps there are some pros, there are some cons. Cons, he could die, and then the animal gets put down. 
uh, Pro, it's getting to do a natural behavior that otherwise it wouldn't be doing in the wild, which is that <laughs> that motion with its tail, using its tail muscles to propel itself out the water. The gray area, super gray area. Like, maybe if it wasn't for Steve, I wouldn't be so into animals. Who knows? So, adopting the five freedoms is what should be taken away from them. Always uphold that an animal should have correct food, be free from harm, pain, injury, and sickness, have a correct enclosure, mimicking its native environment as much as they can, have the ability to express natural behaviors, and to be housed with or apart from members of the same species or other species. I have been Scott, and this has been a long rambling video, and I hope you've learned something, and it wasn't a complete waste of time. If you have anything you want to say, or think I got something wrong, or want to elaborate on something, just mention it in the comments, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and look after yourselves, and look after the world, because we're interconnected and all that hippie jazz. Whatever. See ya.